just as promised. Traveler and Paimon. I'm so glad that you two came back to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. <laughs> Indeed. The festival's tomorrow. We've been preparing for so long that I can't help but feel a little nervous. There's no need to be nervous. Paimon's sure that Lesser Lord Kusanali will feel everyone's gratitude. <laughs> Thanks, Paimon. I hope that everyone who comes to the festival will also have a good time. Speaking of which, um, did you manage to make your way to Port Ormos? Discover anything over there? Of course we went! A lot of things happened there. <sighs> I see. Sounds like you two had another exciting adventure. If there is another chance, I would love to join. <sighs> My lady, if you went to Port Ormos in your current state, we'd both be in for a lifetime of trouble. Dropping. It's called covert protection. Keeping an ear out for what's going on around my employer is part of the job. It's all right, Dia. I merely said I would like to go. I know better than to think my body could handle it. <sighs> the festival's tomorrow. I've been doing nothing but causing trouble for you. So, Dia, please take some time to relax. I'll be fine. Mm, even when you put it that way, it still doesn't feel right. Don't worry, my guardian knight. <sighs> okay, fine, but only tonight. Tomorrow's a big day, and many no-good scumbags are gonna try to take advantage of that. Ah! Oh, uh, you two must be exhausted from your long journey back to the city. Uh, my apologies for not realizing this sooner. I've already prepared a room for you to rest. Please follow me. Whoa, you're so thoughtful. Paimon's so ready. We are. It's also fairly close to where I've been staying. <laughs> Not at all. It, just tell me more about your adventures when you next get the chance. That's Paimon's specialty. Paimon can tell you stories next time. Oh, if you don't mind, how about we all walk around together tomorrow? All of my friends will be working the festival, and Dia is still insisting on her covert protection. Yeah. It'll be pretty hard to relax and enjoy the festival if Dia's constantly hovering over you, right? Then let's meet at the nearby bazaar first thing tomorrow morning. Have a great night. It's a deal! Good night, Dunyarzad! I may be too excited to fall asleep tonight. See you tomorrow. Paimon started to really look forward to the sub -Zero Festival, too! Will there be lots of yummy food? Oh, no, no. Thinking about food is just gonna keep Paimon up all night. The earlier we sleep, the better. Let's go inside, Traveler. Ah, did we oversleep? We should go meet Dunyarzad right away. Traveler, Paimon, I've been waiting for you two. Good morning, Dunyarzad. We must have overslept a little bit. <laughs> Not at all. I arrived early. Oh, today is finally here. I must cherish every moment as if it were gold. You've worked so hard for this day. You gotta enjoy it to the fullest. <laughs> you know it. Oh, it's just that, um... As expected, I had some trouble falling asleep last night. I'm hoping my body won't be too much of an issue today. Well, shall we? Let's start with the stalls over there. Many vendors came out of the blue to support the event, and they insisted on covering costs themselves. Let's go give them some business. They paid for everything out of pocket? Oh, sounds like they're not in this just for the Mora. 
<laughs> they all said that contributing to a lively festival atmosphere is more important than money. Especially since we don't often get to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. This is a stall offering foods from the Haftmewa feast. Oh, you could tell straight away. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. Mushrooms, flowers, and all kind of fruit? It's all vegetarian stuff. Oh, Paimon's a little disappointed. So, what's the Haftmewa feast you mentioned just now? It's another sub festival tradition. People used to set their tables with seven different foods. Generally speaking, the most common selections were foods like Rukashava mushrooms, Nilo Pala lotuses, Sumera roses, Sunsetias, Kapalatas, Hara fruits, and Zaytun peaches. So, the Subzero festival is a vegetarian holiday? <laughs> you don't have to be a vegetarian to enjoy the spread. We just use the seven foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. Wait! If Sumeru uses vegetarian food to represent the Dendro Archon, then wouldn't the Pyro Archon's festival be full of food like roasted fowl, juicy meatballs, grilled steak? Oh, Traveler, we have to go to Netlon as soon as possible! <laughs> I hope your wish comes true one day, Paimon. Thanks! Alright, how about we also check out some of these other stalls? Dear customers, would you like to try your hand at alchemical divination? What's alchemical divination? Those two things sound like they'd be fun to try together. Right? I thought the same when I first heard about it. It is said to be a mysterious craft invented by none other than Lesser Lord Kusanali herself. So, how does it work? It's quite simple. After you give me any two alchemical reagents, I'll use them to perform a random transmutation. Sure sounds random. So random that it will probably fail. That is precisely what we need. After the transmutation fails, your one and only diviner here will interpret the remnants. Well, according to Lesser Lord Kusanali, everything is interconnected. And all that occurs can be traced back to fate. You could say this is a pearl of old wisdom. Why does everything sound so much more credible when Dunya Azad says it? Are you guys working together? So that's the true wisdom behind it. This young lady sure knows her stuff. So, how about it? Want to give it a try? Okay, one moment. Hmm... It's the moon. Uh, is it? It looks more like a pie that Paimon bit into. Hmm. Generally speaking, the moon signifies... It means... Uh... Wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, I remember now. It means illusions and lies. Illusions and lies? That sounds rather ominous. Yes, but this book says that if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. He's not even trying to hide his book anymore. Naturally, fate will only ever show you the beginning of a journey. It is up to you to forge your own ending. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> uh... Still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. They say the sub Festival was very lively a long, long time ago. Large flower carriages used to parade through the city. As they headed towards Port Ormos, people would throw flowers, candy, and liquor all along the way. Dunyarzad's eyes are sparkling right now. Oh, I wish I could have seen that spectacle. But if you ask me, I'm sure Nilu's dance of sub will be just as impressive. Ferris! 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 
Attention! Soldiers, fall into formation if you want any Yalda candies. It's a weird guy with a weird hat! Hey! It's two years old! Wow! wow. <laughs> Miss Dunyarzad, the children love you even more than the Yalda candies. In the few short days it took to prepare for the Sabzeru's festival, the children have all grown very fond of you. Uh, um, the Hallowed Night of Flowers. It's an honor that you know my name. <coughs> Attention! In the name of Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, I commend you on your contributions to the glorious Sabzeru's festival. All right, little soldiers. Take your Yalda candies and don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed! Yes, Knight Ferris! Uh, just what is going on here? <laughs> Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another Subzeris festival icon and one immensely popular with children. In the past, the actor portraying Ferris would also sit on a flower carriage. It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can make such wonderful memories today. As are we to you, Vihar. <laughs> oh, not at all. Oh, speaking of tradition, do you want some Yalta candies? They're a festival staple, and I happen to have some boxes readied here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Whichever one? Um... Don't these boxes all look the same? <laughs> that is the fun part. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Ooh, those all sound pretty good. And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Huh? What's up with those two flavors? Oni kabuto is a little spicier than lizard tail. Tanyarzad, you, you tried them before? Hmm. Traveler? Paimon pick one. Paimon wants the Sunsetia flavor. It's all right. Paimon believes in you. I also believe in your intuition. Great. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? <laughs> Excellent work. That is indeed Sunsetia. Paimon bet you survived so many epic battles because you had incredible luck, and Paimon was right! Attention! Here's your Sunsetia-flavored candy. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Knight of Candies. It's Knight of Flowers, not Knight of Candies. <laughs> Paimon really wilted the carriageless Knight of Flowers. They all basically sound the same. We got our candy, so let's keep going. Oh, uh, actually, I just remembered that I left something behind. Um, since you're here, can you come with me to get it? Dunyarzad, you probably forgot because you're so excited about the sub Zero's festival. <laughs> uh, how embarrassing. We're too late. Who knew the little lady was such an early riser? I know, right? Hey, wait a minute. Puss! Isn't that her? Oh, that most certainly is. We're in luck. She's walking right into our clutches. Those Aramites don't look like they're up to any good. Who are you? I don't believe the Homayanis hired you. <laughs> That's right. We haven't received any of their mora, but... I wonder how much the Humayanis would shell out to get you back. They're a gang of kidnappers! Traveler, hurry and protect Dunyarzad! Hey, did you scumbags even consider that the Homayanis might have hired a merc that outclasses you? You're... Dia! Dia the Flame Mane! No wonder we mercs haven't heard anything about you for so long. You sold your unruly mane to the highest bidder. Don't speak so disrespectfully. My family started working with her as gratitude for her past kindness to us. Don't worry about it, my lady. 
Just some friendly banter between mercs. One punch and those rabid dogs will expose themselves for what they really are. <laughs> Aren't your claws all dull by now? Don't get too cocky! Traveler, take Miss Dunyarzad to a safe location. No! We're gonna stay and help! There's too many of them! Mm, you're right. Alright, fine! Please be careful, dear. Don't waste your time worrying about me. This is my job. Look out for yourself. After I've wiped the floor with them, I'll go find you all. <coughs> Dunyarzad, are you okay? You look a little pale. Are you in shock? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. My body always reacts like this whenever I exert myself too much. You sure you're okay? I'll be fine after some rest. I'm more worried about Dia. After all, none of this would have happened if I hadn't insisted on coming out today. Yeah, don't worry. My lady, traveler, found ya. You took care of them so fast! Any more of them? Or rather, did anyone follow you? Dia, your arm! Oh, this? I'm fine. It's just a scratch. Normally, they wouldn't have been able to land a hit on me at all, but I'm still getting used to this new greatsword. Please, let me take a closer look. Come on, it's nothing. Us mercs aren't as fragile as you think. Hold on, you said something about a new greatsword. Uh, what happened to the one you were using before? Uh, about that. Well, I sold it, because I was low on Mora. Stuff like this happens every now and then. It can't be. The anonymous donation that was used for the venue's final round of preparations? <sighs> <laughs> Hey, Miss Dunyarzad, I wasn't trying to make you cry, and I'm not gonna lose my commission because I made my employer cry, am I? <laughs> okay, making your employer cry won't affect your commission, but selling your weapon without permission and getting hurt? I'll have to reevaluate your performance. <laughs> You're so unreasonable, my lady. <laughs> Thank you very much, dear. Don't be like that. I get embarrassed really easily. <coughs> Are you feeling unwell again, Dunyarzad? My lady, your condition. Traveler, can you take her somewhere to rest? I'll look around the area to make sure we're safe from an ambush. Truly, I'm sorry for the trouble, everyone. Are you feeling better, Dunyarzad? Yes, much better. Just give me a few moments and I'll be good to go. I didn't realize you were concerned about it. I guess I shouldn't continue to keep it a secret. I was actually born with Elazar. It's terminal now. Can't believe it's Elazar! Oh, uh, you've already heard of Elazar. In that case, you probably know about its severity. Sumero's current medical advancements still haven't been able to find a cure. The disease's progression can only be delayed through environmental therapy. Dunyarzad. There's no need to be sad. I've always lived with Elazar and I came to terms with it a long time ago. Compared to the simple fact that I'm afflicted with this, its effects on my life have been much more painful. 
I know that my family loves me dearly. They've done all they can to provide the best environment for me so that I can live for that much longer. However, I know I will one day succumb to this. Did you know? Before I ran away from home this time, the world outside of my home didn't even know that I existed. Since I was a child, all I could do was sit on my bed and stare at everything outside of my window. I'm sure my family's worried and disappointed in me for running away, but I... I just didn't want to have any regrets. I wanted to meet other people. To me, there's nothing more beautiful than being able to meet and speak with others. Not to mention the incredible time spent preparing for the festival. The joy on everyone's faces here, and all the support I've received from friends like Dia. This way, when my final day does arrive, it will be less sorrowful. At the very least, many people will remember that I once existed in this world, right? Uh, as long as you don't forget Paimon, Paimon also won't forget about you. Uh, no. Even if you forget Paimon, Paimon will still remember you. <laughs> oh, thank you too so much. I apologize for the depressing conversation. This is, this is out of character for me. To be honest, Lesser Lord Kusanali gave me the courage to do all of this. If it weren't for her encouragement, I wouldn't have taken that first step. Thanks. There will always be frustrations in life. But I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. Oh, right! Isn't it almost time? Huh? Almost time for what? Isn't the Dance of Sub-Zeros about to begin? It's the part of the festival that I've been looking forward to the most. Nilu will recreate that legendary scene with her most splendid dancing. And the Sub-Zeros festival will conclude amid everyone's applause and blessings. And with that, my wish will also... And what are we waiting for? Let's go to the stage! Yeah, we should still make it in time. Were you not aware that the law prohibits this type of performance from taking place without prior permission? Over there! Someone's yelling at Nilu! I think I just saw the Academia's Grand Sage. Why is he here in person? But the dance of sub -Zeros is one of the key parts of the sub -Zeros festival. If we can't perform it... The sub -Zeros festival. The law also prohibits the private hosting of large-scale religious festivals. Only the Academia can host such an event. If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? The Academia was originally responsible for the sub Festival, but they failed this responsibility for many years. I need to speak with them. This is a hard pill to swallow, but... You're right. Things would only get worse. Art. Dance. Aren't you ashamed of pursuing such frivolous and meaningless activities in this land of knowledge and reason? Our Archon created the utopia that is Sumeru City for all scholars who sought validity, verity, and truth, while people like you wish to defile it. No. I believe that our Archon never rejected the arts. Even the Goddess of Flowers dedicated a dance to her. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. We will announce it to the public later via the Akasha. Understood. I will inform him when I return. Hmm. The sub -Zeru's Festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Nilu, are you okay? Oh, do 
Junior-Zod. You all saw that just now? The Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. Yeah. Let's go somewhere the Academia can't find us and perform there. Ah, uh, but how do we let everyone know? And what about the atmosphere on the stage? Or we could get people to block them off so they can't interrupt the performance. Ah, uh, no. They just threatened to investigate the organizers. If we were caught... Nilu, it's all right. Don't worry about it. But you've been looking forward to the Dance of Sub-Zero so much. And I know how important this festival is to you. I don't want you to have any regrets. It's okay. Seeing you care this much about my feelings is more than enough. It would be too risky to continue the sub festival at this point. I don't want to get everyone in trouble. If you say so. But... You can sneak out for the next sub festival, right? We'll make sure the next one is a smashing success. The next one. Yes. Okay. It's a promise. It will be a smashing success. Paimon can't believe this is how things turned out. Those heartless geezers. It really is okay. There's nothing we can do about it. <sighs> Still, I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilu's dance. <sighs> a lot happened today. It's a shame the festival ended the way it did. Nilu and Dunyarzad promised to make the next sub -Zero's festival a success. But Dunyarzad is running out of time. Yeah. All connections have been secured to construct the most stable framework possible. The project has entered its most critical phase. Power has begun to flow from... Not at all. I arrived early. Uh, you seem kinda tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Shall we go? Let's start with the stalls over there. Sure! Uh, Traveler? Why are you just standing there? Let's get going! Ooh, they're selling food over that way! Let's go take a look! This is a stall offering foods from the Hoft Maywa feast. You are quite well informed, miss. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. They're all plants! Oh, Paimon's a little disappointed. Actually, what is the Hoft Maywa feast you mentioned just now? It's one of the sub Festival's traditions. People used to set their tables with seven different foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. Here to be in the form of the moon. Really? Paimon thought it looked like some kind of food. Hmm. The moon signifies. Hmm. It's escaping me for now. Wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, right. <laughs> it means illusions and lies. But if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. Understood. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> uh. Guess that was still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. So, where to next? All right.
right, soldiers. Now that you have your Yalda candies, don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed. Yes, Knight Ferris! What's going on? Is this a play? Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another sub festival icon and one immensely popular with children. <laughs> it's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can meet the Knight of Flowers. Oh, do you want some Yalda candies? I happen to have some boxes readied here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Uh, what's the pick? Don't these boxes all look the same? <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Ooh, how interesting! And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Ugh, why do those flavors even exist? Hmm. Traveler, help Paimon pick one. Paimon wants to eat the sunsetia flavor. Great! These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Ah, excellently chosen. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. <laughs> Paimon bet you had incredible luck, and Paimon was right. Huh? Are you saying that you instinctively chose the right box? Hmm. But now that you mention it, Paimon also had the feeling you'd choose the right one. Is that maybe we didn't sleep very well last night? Or maybe we slept too much! Oh, it, sure. Huh? Where are you going? You're just gonna walk off like that? A feeling of... Deja vu? Oh, Paimon knows what that is. It's when you feel like you've already experienced whatever is going on. In that case, Paimon also felt something like that today. But that's just our brains playing tricks on us, isn't it? So why'd you run here in such a hurry? So that's it! You're intentionally doing things you usually wouldn't and seeing if you still get that same feeling of deja vu. Welcome, you two! Are you here for lunch? What would you like to eat? Got it. You don't look like you're from these parts, but I gotta say, you've got good taste. <laughs> I'll give this order to the kitchen. Charcoal baked Angelina cake? Isn't it that... that burned thing that didn't look tasty at all? Oh, Paimon understands what you're trying to do now. You'd never normally order something like this. That... thing? Are you really gonna eat it? Uh... Isn't this... going a bit too far? Ha... How was it? The look on your face is telling Paimon that it tasted awful. Then... You mean... That's impossible! We were just talking about how gross it looked! So, would this be a case of taste bud deja vu? Paimon also gets the impression that we've been here many times, even though we are regulars. Um, how about we go out again and try something else? Sitting by yourself on that bench over there. What a coincidence, Dunyarzad. We meet again. Uh, why are you sitting here all by yourself? Oh, I ran into some kidnappers just now, but thankfully Dia came to my rescue. 
I, I started to feel unwell after that, so I sat down here. Kidnappers? Oh my goodness, are you hurt? I'm okay. The arm got scratched, but it isn't serious. Whew. That's a big relief. But, Dunyarzad, you seem a little down today. It's the Subzerus Festival, and you've been looking forward to it so much! Not at all. I've always been like this. Excessive physical exertion or strong emotions tend to aggravate my illness. Besides, no matter how amazing today may be, it is but a single day. After however many more days, my time will come to an end. Paimon doesn't quite follow you, and Paimon feels like something's really got you down right now. It really is fine. I don't mind. Huh? Did something happen? Dunyarzad, have you ever felt deja vu? You know, like when you've already experienced something that's happening right now? Deja vu? No. But my days have been the same for years now. Even if I were feeling deja vu, I suppose I would already be used to it. Oh, Paimon sees. Then, is it only the two of us? It's almost time. Huh? Time for what? Nilu's dance of Subzerus is about to begin. Let's go. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. We will publicly announce it later through the Akasha. Understood. I will inform him when I return. <sighs> The Subzerus Festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Nilu, are you okay? Oh, Dunyarzad. The Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. It's okay. There's nothing we can do about it. But you've been really looking forward to this. I don't want you to have any regrets. It truly is unfortunate, but I don't want to cause trouble for anyone. Didn't the Grand Sage say that he might investigate the organizers? True, but... Uh... Well, okay. I'll just have to try again next year. The next festival. I probably won't be around by then. Wait, what did you just say? Uh, no, nothing. I'll be heading back to rest. Thank you for your help, everyone. Paimon can't believe what those heartless geezers did! Ah! Did Dunyarzad already go back? We should also return and get some sleep. So, in the end, you still couldn't figure out what that deja vu feeling was all about? Hmm. Maybe it really was because of exhaustion. Same here. That's why Paimon stopped thinking about it halfway through the day. Then, how about we settle in and get a good night's sleep? For now, we can chalk things up to exhaustion. We can do more thinking tomorrow. Observing a modest drop in the output of Nyana energy, but values still remain within normal parameters. Continue to monitor for variances in the data, and 
you waiting not at all i arrived early huh paimon thinks you sound kind of tired did you not get enough sleep i'm doing well there's no need to worry shall we go let's start with the stalls over there great idea let's get going traveler It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can enjoy the Sabzeru's festival. Oh, are you interested in Yalda candies? I have some boxes of candy here. Pick whichever one you want. Hmm, not much of a choice. All these boxes look the same. <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Mmm, they all sound pretty tasty. And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Huh? What were those last two? Mmm, he'll help me choose. Paima wants to eat the sunsetia flavor. No problem. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Oh, -ho, I like your confidence. No hesitation at all. Oh, congratulations. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. in the other flavors. Oh! Uh, wait. How did you know? Don't tell me that you already knew which flavor was in each box. What? He was right about all of them? That couldn't have been luck. How, how is this possible? I packed all those boxes this morning and they've been sealed ever since. You couldn't have known beforehand. Mind reading? X-ray vision? Or some kind of magic trick? This is way too freaky. Tell us what's going on! Since when did you get superpowers? Traveler? Hey, where are you going? What's going on? Did you see something? Dunyarzad without letting her know is kind of rude, you know. What are you looking for? Why did we come here?
traveler. already know that this isn't your first sub -Zero's festival, don't you? I'm sure you already know how to use this. A knowledge capsule? Where did you get it? What's inside? You should use it too, Paimon. Uh, you, you know Paimon? This seems kind of sketchy, but Paimon feels like this is what we should do. What the? This is our 20th time at the Sub-Zero's festival? Huh? No. The 30th? 40th? Just how many times have we been to the Sub-Zero's festival? Have we been trapped in a single day? If it weren't for you, we wouldn't have even realized. What the heck was inside that knowledge capsule? Hmm. Your memories are still scrambled? Try your best to remember. This isn't the first time we've met, and I answered that question a long time ago. Uh, let Paimon think. Oh, it's coming back. Meeting you was the real catalyst for restoring our memories, and the knowledge capsule was just your means of showing our minds the way. Uh, what about everyone else? Why are you only helping the two of us? Your sense of deja vu is stronger than everyone else's, yes? As for an explanation, you two received the blessing of Dendro. And you also have special, sensitive constitutions. It was as if a single sheet of paper was separating those memories from your consciousness. A familiar question. I think this is the seventh time you asked that. As you can see, she isn't doing well. You probably sensed it too. The Dunyarzad you were just with is different from the first Dunyarzad you met. That first Dunyarzad is in front of you right now, and... She doesn't have a lot of time left. <laughs> Looks like you're almost done sorting out your brain. Oh yeah, I'm Nahida. Good, you passed the test. What's happening? You can awaken our memories, and you seem like you know what's going on. Oh, wait. Please don't tell Paimon even you don't know. Everything in this world runs in a loop. This cycle is called a samsara. You, me, and everyone else are all stuck inside a one-day samsara. As for the truth, that's on you to find out. If you were told the truth instead of discovering it yourselves, it would literally blow your minds. I don't know how you'd be after that. I can only give you surface-level help, like bits of information and subtle hints. For the rest of the time, I'll be doing all I can to slow down Dunyarzad's illness. She looks like she isn't doing well at all. Her illness gets worse after each Sub-Zero's festival. 
If we can break out of the samsara, I might be able to save her. But as things are right now, she's just a small bird in the sky that's about to lose its last feathers. All I can do is raise a gale to delay her fall. You sure love to use weird analogies. <laughs> analogies are wonderful tools. They let you use existing knowledge to understand unfamiliar things. Okay, so, with what you know so far, what do you think the truth is? That should be it. The flow of time is endlessly cycling within one single day. A time loop. You've given similarly wrong answers in the past. A pity. Still the wrong answer? Paimon thought that made a lot of sense. It feels like time's just repeating itself. A simple time loop can't explain some of the phenomena. You two are still missing a lot of information. Unfortunately, I can't give you any more hints. <coughs> Dunya is odd. The Subzerus Festival is happening every day, but that doesn't mean we can waste an infinite amount of them. Hurry and find the truth before today's festival ends. Let's think about our current situation. To save Dunyarzad, we have to escape the Samsara of the Subzerus Festival. And to do that, we need to figure out what's happening. The truth. Nahida rejected the idea of a time loop, so... We must have missed something, right? Paimon's memories say that we've already done this many times, but... Let's go talk to people again. It's more productive than sitting here and scratching our heads. Why don't we start with... Those stall owners! Hey there! Hey, it's you guys again. Where's your cultured friend? She... Uh, she's feeling a little unwell. I see. Did you come back to buy something? I guarantee the freshness of my products. I harvested them from the forest just yesterday. Huh? What brought this about? I hurried back from the forest yesterday, and I'm selling protos here today. I haven't felt anything strange. To put it another way, if you really, really think about it, was yesterday truly yesterday? Did you actually come back from the forest yesterday? What kind of philosophical nonsense is this? Are you two daydreaming? Didn't you know that no one dreams in Sumeru? Go somewhere else if you want to find someone to daydream with. <laughs> Actually has a point. Is this a dream? Is everyone dreaming? Hmm. True. It's so weird that people here don't dream. Why is that? Anyway, if this all really were just a dream, we would have woken up a long time ago. Hmm. Let's keep asking around. Oh, it's you two. Was my divination so accurate that you felt compelled to compliment me in person? Ooh, I knew it! I told you, the god's divination is highly accurate. You just hadn't fully understood its significance yet. <laughs> You're really excited about this, huh? That's exactly why we came back. Help us better understand it. Uh, help you better understand it? W well <laughs> that isn't exactly what I excel at. So, you're admitting that you don't have a clue? Anyway, what kind of situation did you get into? Huh? Uh, hold on a second. I thought you guys just lost your wallet or, or fell for a scam. What you just said... 
Are you serious? Does that kind of thing actually happen in real life? Paimon knew you weren't going to believe it. Marvelous. Truly marvelous. I believe you. Recall the interpretation of your divination. The moon, illusions, and lies. It really felt like an omen. When you say it like that, the divination does sound like it's related to what's going on. Can you read any more into it? I believe that the Archon's revelations are never more than vague hints. Anything more specific is beyond the reach of mere mortals. The book only says, If you trust your instincts and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. So that's how it is. Looks like fortune-telling is just fortune-telling. It's no good for practical problems. We haven't made any progress. Who else can we talk to? Hmm, Paima remembers that we tried talking to her a couple of times, but she always thinks we're playing pranks on her. You think she'll brush us off again? Yeah. If we tap into Dia's strong sense of responsibility as a mercenary, then she'll definitely take us seriously. Hmm, at this time of day, Dia's probably just finished beating up those kidnappers. Let's go find her! I'm fine, my lady. It's just a scratch. Perfect timing. Both of you are here! Paimon, Traveler, you came at just the right time. Listen, there was a dangerous ga- Huh? You saw? Then why didn't you jump in earlier? If someone was protecting Miss Dunyar's I could've went all out. <sighs> anyway, can you do something for me? You want the Traveler to take Dunyar's Odd somewhere to rest up while you check to see if there's still any kidnappers around. Did Paimon get that right? How did you know what I was going to say? We need to say something convincing. Tell her, Traveler! Uh, I didn't tell anyone about that. Including Miss Dunyarzad. You couldn't have known. And just now, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. What's going on? Alright, so this is the situation. <laughs> it's kinda hard to believe what you just told me. First, let me make something clear. Most of us desert dwellers might not be the scholarly type, but we do have basic common sense. She's quieter than usual. Uninterested in anything and really gloomy. Yeah, she isn't the same as before, but her parents said that this is how she was like at first. Huh? At first? I don't quite understand what you're all talking about. I'll go rest on the bench over there. My lady, are you angry? All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt since you knew about my greatsword. Let's make this a quick trip. Miss Dunyarzad isn't completely safe here. Nahida! We brought a friend! Are you busy? I thought I told you that it won't help to bring anyone here. We just wanted her to see the real Dunyarzad's condition. The real Dunyarzad? Uh, where and who are you talking to? Huh? <sighs> I told you that you two are special. Other people can't see me or Miss Dunyarzad here. Hold on. Over there. Is that? Wow. How perceptive. Does she have invisible antennae? Miss Dunyarzad, she's... she's lying down here, isn't she? How's she doing? Her condition's really bad, and she's basically in a coma. How did you know she was here? I 
can sense her aura. I... <sighs> there are also lingering feelings of something like regret or disappointment. <sighs> what happened? Do you believe us now? The sub -Zero's festival has been repeating itself. So, you think the sages are behind this? Yeah, they've always been against us. Wouldn't surprise me if they're using the Akasha to intentionally repeat the sub -Zero's festival as a sick joke. Hmm, you have a point. Aside from the Dendro Archon, the Academia sages are the only ones in Sumeru who could pull off something like this. Maybe there's more to the Akasha than we know. Right! Didn't you awaken our memories using something that looked like a knowledge capsule? That means you must know something about the Akasha! The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. A Gnosis could do that? No wonder the Akasha is so magical! It's being powered by the Gnosis of Sumeru's Archon! So, uh, this Nahida you mentioned, what did she say? She said, and Paimon quotes, The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. Compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and grants knowledge to the people. Mm, wait. I get the grants knowledge part. That's what people have always used the Akasha for. But compiling the entire populace's wisdom? How does that work? Did she mean that the sages enter new knowledge into the Akasha? Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. What do you think? My mind feels exhausted, even though I haven't done too much thinking. What is... You mean the Akasha is causing our mental fatigue? Huh. Now that I think about it, my head's been feeling unusually heavy. When the Desert Dwellers set off on their quest for knowledge, a sage once said, Knowledge always comes at a price. Compiling the entire country's knowledge. You think the Akasha pulled a 180 and is extracting information from us? Who knows? The Akasha can put knowledge into our heads, so who's to say that it can't also poke around in there? We don't know any specifics. What's the point of doing something like that? Just think about it. If you could combine the knowledge of every single person in Sumeru, then you can basically turn Sumeru City into a single massive brain. This hive mind could make breakthroughs and problems that even the smartest geniuses can't crack. An excellent deduction. And the analogy comparing Sumeru City to a massive brain? <sighs> I love it. In that case, we should take off our Akasha terminals right away. Maybe that'll solve this problem. Yeah, I was only wearing this for show in the first place. Didn't expect the sages to cook up such a conspiracy. Tch, mark my words, when this is over, I'm getting evidence and exposing this whole thing to the public. How does everyone feel? Huh? What is it? Oh, that! Paimon knows what you're talking about. It's a single soft beep that sounds like it's coming from the Akasha terminal. The sound of a beep. Could it be a prompt tone for when the Akasha is operating? That's probably an important clue. We weren't using our terminals, but we heard a beep anyway. Traveler, did you hear that? I heard it too. Our ears aren't messing with us. There was definitely a beep, but it sounded like it was coming from inside my head. We took off our Akasha terminals.
Faye's runtime has exceeded its expected length. At this rate, there may be casualties. But we cannot lose all of our progress. remembers everything! <laughs> Good. You adapted quickly this time. We definitely took off our Akasha terminals last night, but we still heard that beep. Why is that? <sighs> but now we can at least confirm one thing. The Akasha definitely has something to do with whatever's trapping us in this cycle. Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Why would the Akasha go this far if all it wants is everybody's wisdom? It's extremely difficult for lab rats in an experiment to understand why they're being treated the way they are. If we're lab rats, then what are you? Nahida, you've never told us anything about yourself. Hmm... I guess... I'm the moon. The moon? Wasn't that the result of our divination? Anyway, knowing who I am won't help you get closer to the truth. So you should focus on other things. Don't get distracted and miss any clues. <sighs> okay then. Dia helped us a lot yesterday, so let's go find her. If Paimon's reading the time correctly, those kidnappers should be showing up soon. Ah, there you are. I've already taken care of those kidnappers. My lady, did you get hurt? Huh? Dia? What's wrong? Why are you both gawking at me like that? You... you didn't get hurt this time! Huh? What do you mean, this time? Why are you so surprised that I managed to get out unscathed? Those kids were amateurs. How did you know about my greatsword? I haven't told anyone about it. Please, don't tell Miss Dunyarzad. So Dia's lost her memories after all. Anything strange? You already know that I got a new greatsword. Hmm, if I had to say something, it's weird how such a new weapon could feel so familiar. It's as if... I've already used it to fight a countless number of battles. You're saying that although you don't remember using it, your body feels like it does? That's right. Both mercenaries and warriors heavily rely on muscle memory. Only knowing the theory of battle won't get you anywhere. Traveler, what do you think? Yeah! Hyman's feeling really hopeful! Oh, you're right! Earlier in the Samsara, something like this would have never happened! I have no clue what you two are talking about, but it's still dangerous here, so... So you want us to take Dunyarzad somewhere else to rest while you check if there are still more kidnappers around, right? How did you know what I was gonna say? Can you read minds? Uh, forget it. Go and do your thing. Time. Aside from Dia not getting injured, everything seems to have stayed the same. Hmm. Listen, Nahida, we found out that Dia got out just fine today, even though she got injured every other time she fought the kidnappers. Do you think the samsara has been broken? Have we saved Dunyarzad? Really? Good job on all that progress. 
get some good sleep tonight. Hey, what kind of an answer is that? Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. How many todays has it been? Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist as anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless Sub-Zero's festival. Okay, okay, no more! Paimon's brain is already shut down. <laughs> That's why it makes no sense to waste your energy thinking about things you will learn tomorrow. Get some good rest. You know, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety dookie away. Uh, huh? Hold on, what did you just say? Did Paimon hear you correctly? Huh? People always say they feel a sense of relief after they take a duke duke. That's why I suggested you could try that. Is that so strange? Uh, it's so strange and so against common sense that... Paimon's at a loss for words! You were sounding kind of smart just a minute ago! Yeah, even though it's happy and lively at the Sub-Zero's festival every day, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really gotten to relax. Uh, let's go back to our room. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, these sacrifices are trivial. We're still in the same day! Nahida, you already knew last night that we didn't break out of the Samsara? Why didn't you tell us?! <laughs> Would there have been a point? You that spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't come by often, and I thought it might help you clear your minds. I'm a that the Duke Duke did that! Oh, uh, whatever. Guess you were looking out for us after all. <laughs> of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything to me. But maybe you're taking things a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. That's why you two have been everything to me. Get it? Nahida's talking about confusing stuff again. Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. So, Traveler, did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? Huh? Why are you scrapping your previous theory? Oh, yeah! You're right! Gosh, how did we not notice that? In a simple time loop, people's physical conditions should also reset. So, what's your new hypothesis? Mercenaries rely heavily on muscle memory, and Dia was able to use her experiences to avoid injury in later Samsara cycles. If all our memories of a day are erased at the end of that day, then we would unwittingly relive the same day again and again. memory can't be erased. That's why Dia has been getting better at using her great sword. Now everything makes sense. Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong. To put it simply, 
It's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. That isn't simple at all! Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Right! She did help us find our latest clue after all. Let's go! There you are. Really took me a while to find you. As expected, Dia also didn't get hurt today. Get hurt? Why would I? Don't underestimate me. Well, you're still getting used to your new great sword. Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just suddenly felt so familiar in my hands and... Uh, wait a second! How did you know I got a new great sword to begin with? I didn't tell anyone about it. Traveler, could you explain the situation to her today? Paimon's gotten a little sick of doing it. Oh, that works! What happened to you guys while I was gone? Did you get brainwashed by some cult? Um, don't think too hard about it. Just take what we're saying at face value. All right, then. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that my body's already gotten used to this great sword, but my brain just doesn't remember it? Yes, your memory's being erased every day. Then I'd have to disagree. That's impossible. Oh? Why do you think that? If we've actually been reliving the Subzerus Festival day after day, then what happened to the things we used, the money we spent, the food we ate? Common sense says my wallet should have emptied itself a long time ago. There's no way I wouldn't have noticed that. Right! They could use the Akasha to record what everyone did that day, and then use the city's resources to replenish everything! It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. I've got proof. You have proof? Where? <sighs> you two are surprisingly serious about this nonsensical discussion. Fine, I'll play along for a little longer. Come with me, Miss Dunyarzad. Please come along as well. I still can't guarantee that this area is safe. I can't believe it's Dia who wants to show us something this time. Two days ago, we were the ones taking her to see Dunyarzad. This is it. Huh? This is a wooden training dummy. What about it? See those marks on the dummy? Those are the result of several days' worth of practice. Let's say the sages didn't replace it every day. Shouldn't it be hacked to pieces by now? That's true, but what if they did? Then the sages would have had to reproduce every mark I left during previous training sessions. I'm a professional fighter. My martial school has always emphasized the importance of refined control. The force, angle, and entry point of each strike is calculated and deliberate. That's why I remember every mark on the dummy, as well as my state of mind as I made each strike. It's just as they say. Each swordsman has their own unique style. And even the same swordsman can't make the same cut twice. It would be impossible to copy these marks. Is it really impossible? <gasps> what if they use some fancy machine to carve every single mark? People often say that a camera's photo can never replace an artist's painting because the former has no spirit to it. The same thing applies here. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks from the results of combat training. Whew, I hope that cleared things up for you. Hey, is this that new brain exercise game that's been super popular with the scholars lately? It's surprisingly fun. Anyway, it's getting late. I should escort Miss Dunyarzad to Nilu stage. See you later. Well, back to square one. Is our memory deletion theory also wrong? <sighs> but at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime. Yep, that's true. So, can we think of any new ideas right now? Strange? 
Paimon feels like everything's been strange lately. Huh? Leaving the city? You're right! It's really strange how we never thought of such a simple solution! Many things should become clear if we can confirm the flow of time outside of the city. Paimon can't believe it! Did we miss this because we're tunnel visioning too hard on our other theories? Or because we're just too tired? How about we go back and ask Nahida? Maybe we've forgotten something about leaving the city. Nahida, we're back! You're back early today. Did you find something new? Sort of. We're mostly sure now that we're not in a time loop. And we also aren't in the real world. But at the same time, we have a new question. Hmm, leaving the city. As far as I remember, you've mentioned your plans to do that twice before. We did? But we don't remember anything. What happened after we talked about those plans? What did we say when we got back? <sighs> Let me think. I don't think you ever actually told me what the outcome was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that both times, you never came back the whole night. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night anyway, so at the time, I didn't think too much about it. It is true that sometimes we lose track of time during our investigations. Before we know it, it'll already be the next day. But still, neither of us remember anything about leaving town. Really? That's kind of strange. In theory, I should have already awakened all your memories. Yep. Something here's definitely fishy. Let's get to the bottom of this tomorrow. Our memories are back! Uh, about that. Well, where should Paimon begin? Traveler. Aside from your memories that were just restored, I have another message for you. Listen to it and you'll understand. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzerus festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. Traveler, you should be missing two days worth of memories. Paimon will fill you in. It's time to carry out our plan from yesterday. Okay, let's go! We don't have many more festivals to waste. Hurry and find the truth! Why can't we leave the city? What is the Academia up to now? Don't ask me. It's not like I can tell you anything. This is a direct order from the Grand Sage. Just wait until tomorrow. I have a real emergency. My goods have already arrived at Port Ormos. If I don't hurry, they'll be stolen. That's your problem. Make sure you make a request in advance next time. But, but it's not like you can just predict business matters in advance. <laughs> it looks like the Academia already announced a lockdown for Sumeru City today. How completely unsurprising. Let's go and question them. Hello, sir. Why can't we leave the city today? Here we go again. Don't ask me. I don't know either. We just received an order that no one is allowed to enter or exit Sumeru today. They didn't tell us anything else. <laughs> Angering me won't get you anywhere. If I had that kind of insider info, I would have left this stupid post long ago. It looks like he really doesn't know. If we can't get anything out of him, let's take matters into our own hands. Why don't we climb over the walls? Those guards can't be everywhere at once. This is a good spot, and the guard hasn't noticed us at all. Let's hurry! Huh? Why? Are you going to leave Paimon behind? B but... What if things get really weird out there and you get into some trouble? Then... Paimon won't be able to help you. Oh, Paimon knows that Paimon can't do much, but... We've always been together, haven't we? Mm. Okay, 
I'm on wait for you. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon as possible. Just a quick look. And please, be careful. understood what you were saying. Paimon doesn't care! Paimon wanted to go look for you, but you also said that Paimon should stay! Paimon was so worried and so scared the entire day! <gasps> okay. Paimon will forgive you. The most important thing is that you didn't actually disappear. Oh, Paimon was so scared that you had gone into another world! Okay, Paimon, can you tell us your perspective of what really happened yesterday? Hmm, I see. Using two people's different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you... ...disappeared in an instant. No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention! What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside! Something like... a message? But how can we send it back? D don't look at me like that. I'm... I'm not used to being stared at. Well... Okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Give me some time and take care of Dunyarzad for me. Yep! Now we're talking! Done. Here you go. What? Isn't this just an Akasha terminal? I made some little changes. Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. To make something like this? Nahida, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand. Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. We'll never know until we try. At least we're taking the initiative now. Let's go then. Let's expose those sages! Ah. Uh, all right. Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But... Paimon still isn't happy about it. Okay, see you tomorrow, Traveler. That covers everything that's happened so far. <sighs> yes, although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together.
Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. That's one heck of an info dump! It sounds like you left the Sumeru city space when you set foot outside of the walls! But everything looked completely normal when Paimon was looking out from the inside! That's unbelievable. And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. There's another part here. We only received it last night. These spaces have been disappearing one after the other, absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now. Those spaces are actually... Probably because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly disappearing like that be catastrophic? My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. That doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think things through. That doesn't sound right. I need to... Oh, so that's what it is! After the sound of the beep, the final space, the Subzero's festival, also disappears, and we're taken to the next day! Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them. Do lots of new spaces appear every day? Paimon's head is spinning. Just what are these spaces anyhow? Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, Maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow, the Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. Disturb you. The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay, then. 
I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away! Awesome! What is it? Paima wants to know! Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth! You're back. I've been waiting forever for you two. Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your Subzerius exam and graduate from the festival? <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. We are all in a dream. It isn't that the people of Sumeru don't dream. Rather, the Akasha is taking their dreams from them. People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when he was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now! Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So, in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions. And the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from greater Lord Ruka Devada. Hmm... So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the Academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the Samsara? Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes. But as soon as that beep sounded, Many more spaces materialized. Those dreamscapes kept vanishing. But as soon as that beep sounded, more new spaces appeared. Correct. The Akasha is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus Festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha. And so it continues. So... This is like a dream factory, and the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay, so that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. All right, last question. Who am I? They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the moon... <laughs> so you noticed. 
Uh, I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. <sighs> that wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you as all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your minds. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. Firstly, this dream we're in is completely based on reality. People have already experienced this sub festival, so it would be very difficult for them to find anything that strikes them as surreal. Secondly, you're probably wondering why people don't have any memories from earlier samsara, right? That's because people don't remember their dreams most of the time anyway. And in any case, their actual dreams are being taken away from them by the Akasha. So whenever they wake up in this dream of the sub festival, they don't remember anything from their previous identical dream. That reminds Paimon. Traveler had a dream when we were in the Avidia Forest. But couldn't see what it was about after waking up. Is that an example of what you mean? Yes. Only after receiving the blessing of Dendro can a person gain the Dendro element's dream enhancing power. That explains the feelings of deja vu. Meanwhile, everyone else has no idea that they are in the Subzerus Festival Samsara while their dreams are stolen from them over and over again. Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so, when? You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with. Like Dunyarzad. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. People's lives are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've got to put a stop to this! I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? Could it really just be a coincidence? Even you don't know the reason? Wow, now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Traveler, do you have any information? The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? And those spaces remind me of... Dreams. Like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. Except these have no sign of human presence. Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. That doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think... Celebrate the birth of that god? Could it mean? You asked me this question before. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? 
Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. Deceiving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the Subzerus Festival, Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? Ugh. Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, we're out of time today! I'll tell you how to break free of the Samsara tomorrow. See you then. Good morning, Nahida. Uh, wait. Now that Paimon remembers everything, should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> hey! What's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way! Are... Are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Paimon can't believe it! Wait! So what about that other Dunyarzad? Just what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarzad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarzad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarzad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarzad. Puppets are stiff, and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. And you know, speaking of which, the old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her! So you do remember her after all! Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she still... Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, 
then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you'd naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack. And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me, uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Hurry and go. Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. <sighs> Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. But fate was against her. Yeah. Saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the Samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering. Do you think the sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? Huh. That's true. Plus, the sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control. Like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Oh, that would make sense. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is a symbol of the wholesome Zerus Festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? Hmm, you're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine, just... Um... It's a little hard to explain. Uh... Would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you... make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub Zerus festival tradition or something? Less questions, more wishing! Okay. Okay. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So... You have a crush on Dunyarzad? Uh, <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? 
After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy Sub-Zeru's festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her Knight of Flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years, a hundred years, I'll serve her till the end of time. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay, I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh. Oh, you're... Faki? Uh, sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> uh, nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. Everyone who knows Dunyarzad loves her, but none of them has any idea that she... My lady, step back. That sounds like Dia! Oh, right. This is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. Huh? But Dia can handle them. Hey, Traveler! Oh, it's you. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You... Ugh, fine, all right. Knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's not like I don't trust your fighting skills. Anyway, watch yourself. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. You're going down. Uh, a new punch. Yep. Right here. Where do you think you're going? I see everything. Right now, emerge. Traveler, were you just taking your anger out on those guys? <sighs> you and Nahida both. Dunyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Oh. And speaking of her, Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub-Zero's festival, before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Sub-Zero's festival. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. This is the place! It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures! Hey, the windows are unlocked! Okay, uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. This was only a 
temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Junior-Zod wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the sub festival and had all her health problems to worry about, she must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the sub festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her. Hey! Where are you off to now? It's Dunyarzad's puppet! You must be exhausted. Come to think of it, we've been stuck in this place for a really, really long time. Heck, even the last time we were chatting happily with Denyarzad feels like an eternity ago. Paimon still remembers when we were sitting here, and the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Nilu's dance of sub -Zeru's. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. That was what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean... Yes, Traveler. Oh. So she's still just a puppet. But just now... Alk, what? Where are we going this time? If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? Uh... Traveler? Uh, you don't have to get involved. He's a sage from the Academia. I don't want to drag you into this. Traveler. Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the Academia, that's another day gone to waste! Wait! They're not reacting! Have they been scared stiff? Oh, of course! If this is the Sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this! So they're just substitutes. What is this? Who 
What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? <laughs> like I said, they symbolize the Goddess of Flowers. It's just a shame that all the real Bodhisars went extinct after her death. Yes. The Greater Lord brought forth new Bodhisaras in memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. Ah, that beautiful shade of purple. Aren't these flowers real Padisaras? Just like the ones from the legend? I didn't even notice. Tanya Zod, did you find these? But didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away? So, Al? Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, huh? You guys are acting weird. But okay, I'll try. Hmm. They disappeared! So Nilu's the host! What a surprise! Purple body Saras don't exist in the real world anymore! But in Nilu's subconscious, they can appear as decorations on the stage! It's just like the example Nahida told us. People assumed there will be food on a plate, and Nilu assumed there would be real Padisaras in the flower pots. So when you saw the flowers, you instantly knew it was Nilu? But if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're dreaming. How should we make Nilu realize that? Am I dreaming? Huh? <laughs> So I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? Wrong guess, but you aren't completely wrong either. The point is, what made you think this is a dream? As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the First Sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dinyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. So, it was about the first sage, huh? Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the First Sage. As if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be worried. The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife lying next to him said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City, and founded the Academia. <sighs> what a happy ending. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He never went on his journey? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon, so she blessed him in the form of a dream. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. That's a really interesting connection. But we really gotta wake up soon, like the sage in the story! I see. Well, it just so happens that today's sub -Zero's festival is almost over, too.
Since we're in a dream, let's make this final dance of Sub-Zeru's as beautiful as we can. Dedicate this to our god, the dance of sub -Zerus. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Milo's dance. She's not in her room. What happened? Huh? What usual spot? Well done, Traveler and Paimon. And thank you, Dunyarzad, for organizing the sub Festival for me. I'm sorry, who are... Oh, a traveler, Paimon. I have something amazing to tell you. I just had a dream, and I saw Nilu performing the dance of Subzerus. Did you save her? It's a really long story. We shouldn't disturb her. Her consciousness is still weakened. Let's chat somewhere else. Hmm, how about by the Traveler's favorite bench? What's going on? Why are you two so excited to see me? <laughs> Hasn't it only been a night? It's actually been much longer than that. Oh? Strange. Was I really asleep that long? No wonder I have such a headache. Let's talk about Dinyarzad. 
yours on first. It's such a relief that she's all right. Mm -hmm. After we parted on the last day of the Subzerus Festival, I left the city and saw what the Traveler had described. Among the countless dreams, I found one that was growing fainter and fainter. This proved my suspicion. Once Dunyarzad could no longer bear the Akasha harvesting her dreams, her consciousness began to dissipate. But this also meant it escaped the Akasha's control. Such a small fragment of consciousness can't last for very long, though. It will return to its original dream, where both will gradually fade until they completely disappear. I used all the power I had to keep her dying dream alive as long as possible. But it still wouldn't have lasted for much longer if it hadn't been for you two breaking the samsara. So it looks like we did manage to save Dunyarzad in the end! Not a moment too soon! Huh? Why are you two smiling so happily? I thought you'd be so moved that you'd start crying. Hmm. I need to spend more time observing human emotions. Both are fine. Everyone reacts differently. Alright. You two must have a lot of other questions for me, right? After all, you saved my faithful believer. As your reward, I will answer any and all questions. At the Avidia Forest, there was this incense that made the Traveler fall unconscious and dream of a huge tree in a red sky. You also heard someone's voice, right? It said, World, and forget me. Yeah, so you do know! We've been wanting to ask you what that was about, and if the red sky was related to Conria. Hmm, it seems like the Traveler established a connection to Erminsoul. That was a message left by Greater Lord Rukadavata's residual consciousness in Erminsoul. Perhaps her last memory before she died. As you two probably know, Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared after the disaster in Conria. The timings of these events do line up, so your suspicions are reasonable. A message from Greater Lord Ruka Devata? We thought it was from King Deshret. King Deshret? That god who died even longer ago? Uh, some present day desert dwellers still worship him. You probably just heard some of their conspiracies. Okay, so what does the message mean? <sighs> I still haven't managed to decipher it. Even the Akasha isn't currently capable of doing that. Greater Lord Ruka Devata's residual consciousness in Erminsoul seems to be contaminated with something that has a very dangerous aura to it. Many devoted scholars go mad as soon as they connect their consciousness. I've warned the Academia about this many times, but people still keep falling victim to it. But I believe this is the key to saving Erminsoul. That's why I've kept trying to decipher it. So the tree in the vision was Erminsoul? Oh, Tainari also said that Erminsoul is sick! Is it because of the contaminated consciousness? But... Even if you can't figure out what that vision was all about, it seems like our search for you was all in vain. The Traveler wasn't affected after coming in contact with that consciousness. I've never seen anyone like that. With you here, we may have a chance at deciphering it. No, we must decipher its secrets. I've already eliminated all other factors that might affect Erminsoul. This is the only one left. This puzzle has life and death at stake. It could determine Erminsoul's fate, as well as to that's. To be accurate, I'm using the Akasha as a medium to occupy Catherine's consciousness. Uh, how did you do that? Poor Catherine. Uh, does this mean you can also occupy other people's consciousnesses? Theoretically, I can enter anyone's mind as long as they're wearing their Akasha Terminal. The Akasha is the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. As Lesser Lord Kusanali and the first Akasha Terminal, my consciousness has always been linked to the Akasha. 
I've always respected my people's free will, so I've never actually occupied their consciousness. When necessary, I just borrow this bionic Snizhnayan puppet. Uh... Oh, hold on! Did we just learn some deep, dark secret? So Catherine is... No. No wonder Paimon felt something was off about her. What about your own body? Why do you need to borrow other people's? Don't you live in the sanctuary of Suristana? That story begins a long time ago. After Greater Lord Rukadevata disappeared, the sages found my newly born self and took me back to Sumeru. At that time, I was young and weak. The sages kept me in the sanctuary of Suristana, ostensibly for the sake of protecting me. But I've hardly heard from them since. However, I do understand that they had hoped to find Greater Lord Rukadevata instead of me, a symbol of her passing. So, the sages basically put their new Archon under house arrest? How dare they! Uh, why don't you teach them a lesson, Nahida? In some ways, they aren't wrong. Greater Lord Rukadevata was omniscient and omnipotent. Even after her death, the Akasha is still empowering this nation. And I... Uh, I'm still really far away from being able to call myself the God of Wisdom. Moreover, the Academia is also more proficient at governing this country. My existence has little meaning. Yeah, you got a lot of believers. Just look at the sub Festival. Everyone who showed up truly loves you. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. But I honestly don't need physical freedom as long as I can connect my consciousness to the Akasha. Trying to find a way to save Ermansoul is my life's mission and top priority. I will work on that, and try to live up to being a deity in the meantime. Every once in a while, I will also take up the duties of the God of Wisdom, and enlighten a lost soul here and there. Doing all that should be enough. There has never been any big problems with the Academia's governance of Sumeru. This is the first time I've seen them step out of line. I wonder what caused them to go down this path, and what they hope to achieve. Even though the city's residents haven't noticed anything strange, if the Traveler hadn't broken the sub Samsara, the situation could have become dire. I tried to do some investigating in the Akasha, but I couldn't find anything suspicious, and all the people of interest seem to purposely avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. I think they're deliberately trying to hide something. Oh, that reminds Paimon. In Gundarvaville, there was a sage who had invited Tainari to join some kind of project. Could it be related? Regardless, I need to first investigate the sage's motives, make things right, and punish them if needed. But I'll have to be discreet, or they'll see me coming. You mean how the Akasha stops you from having dreams? Yeah. It's been such a long time! No one's noticed something's up? It's not that no one noticed. It's more like no one cared. Ultimately, it's all rooted in the Sage's misdirection. Misdirection? The Sage has convinced everyone to believe that being unable to dream is a sign of rationality and wisdom. Not dreaming is a badge of honor in Sumeru. Even if the truth is that their dreams are being reaped by the Akasha. With their propaganda in place, the Sages can maximize their use of the Akasha to facilitate their research. Besides, Greater Lord Rukadevata must have created the Akasha in the hopes that it could be used to its full potential. That's why I've never come out strongly against this. <sighs> anyway... The perspective advocated by the sages drowned out any voices of doubt. By now, even those who never use Akasha terminals find it too shameful and embarrassing to talk about their dreams. Got it! I hope my answers were satisfactory, seekers of knowledge. <sighs> to be honest, maintaining Dunyarzad's fading dream took a lot of mental energy. I think I may need to rest for a while. 
Oh, and you don't need to worry too much about the Sage's activities for now. The Akasha won't be able to conduct another project on the scale of the Subzerus Samsara in the immediate future. Go and get some sleep. Leave everything to us. <laughs> what a relief. <sighs> this is truly the most exhausting birthday I've ever had. Hmm? Traveler? Paimon? Why am I here? Do either of you know? I... Uh, maybe you were sleepwalking. You know you can't wake up a sleepwalker. We, uh... We happened to walk by, so we thought we'd wait for you to wake up. I see. Huh. I should visit my maintenance personnel sometime. Oh, I'm fine. I better go. Thank you. Quite some time in Sumeru City, but ever since we last said goodbye to Lesser Lord Kusanali, we haven't heard anything from her. Oh, we can't just keep waiting around like this. Let's go find Catherine and pick up some work so we can at least keep ourselves busy.